Here's my review of several different microphone options for use inside of a motorcycle helmet for vlog filming. The first option I tried was the Zennheiser G4 wireless lapel mic. Now, even though this system here is several hundred dollars, but you don't need all this for a helmet mic. All you really need is the lapel mic, which puts it in the same ballpark of around the $30 or so that the other products are. I thought, well, if this lapel mic is so great for doing YouTube videos, why not try it in the helmet? Well, here's what it sounds like. So you can see that just because something is a good lapel mic for videos doesn't mean it's going to be a good recording mic for helmets. They're just not made to filter out that wind noise, which made it a poor choice. Yesterday I took the helmet out to try some microphone configurations and see how it worked. And guess what? Do you hear that audio? Neither do I. So in looking at it, I'd made real sure that that little connector that you have to have for the Purple Panda was in all the way. It wasn't part way out, it was in all the way. But what may have happened is this little connector looks like it may not be in all the way. This is super aggravating. You spend four hours of writing time and you're still fighting with the connectors. You have no way of knowing you don't have audio because there's no like sound level check showing on the camera. And so you spend all this time before you even realize you have an issue. What I should have done is done an initial video yesterday, not just earlier in the week, checked it, made sure everything was good, and then went for the ride. So that little connector being just a fraction of an inch loose was enough to jack with the audio. Now it's working. So now I can go do my test runs again. The next product is the Purple Panda, which is one of the few products that actually sort of aims at the motorcycle vlogging market. Most of these lapel mics that I researched, they don't really say whether they're good for this application or not, so it's a little bit hit or miss and gotta just try it. That's why when I Google searched it, this was one of the few that came up as actually suggested for the application. So the Purple Panda does come with a little rabbit's foot to cut down on wind noise, so that's an option. And I wanted to try it with and without the rabbit's foot. The last couple products both went from their three and a half millimeter pin into the GoPro adapter. This is the first one that for whatever reason, Purple Panda thought it would be good to have a unique connector on this, which has three rings around it, which is not compatible with the GoPro adapter or really anything else that I've found. So I don't know why they did that personally, but what they said is that they do come with this adapter to go from the three ring to the two ring and to make sure it clicks. So you push it in and you feel the click and then to put that end into the GoPro adapter. Well, I tried that and I could not get it to work. What they said is that you have to make sure you push it until it clicks, which I had to what I thought was a normal force for a connector. This one, you have to push it in even further. It's way harder than I'm used to having to push in some kind of an electrical connector made with this tiny wire. But for whatever reason, I guess because they don't want it coming loose, that's what you have to do here. Once that's fully inserted, then yes, it does work to plug in with a normal three and a half millimeter pin now into the GoPro connector and into your camera. So here's what the Purple Panda sounded like in the helmet with and without the rabbit's foot. This is with the windscreen up at 30 mile an hour. This is the windscreen down at 35 mile an hour. There was a beep from a radar detector. I don't know if that is audible or not. Let's see if you can hear the music right now from the uh, Senna. This is about 40 mile an hour, Purple Panda, Rabbit's Foot. This is 55 miles an hour, cruising around with the Purple Panda on the Rabbit's Foot. Now here's 75, Purple Panda, Rabbit's Foot. This is 30 mile an hour with the Purple Panda with the foam windsock. 
50 mile an hour purple panda foam windsock. 75 purple panda foam windsock. The next product is the Audio Technica ATR3350 series lapel mic. I know Audio Technica makes great products. I've had a set of their headphones for quite a while that I've really enjoyed. So I wanted to try this one. When it showed up, the first things that jump out at me is an on off switch and a battery, which both make me extremely nervous because there's two ways that this thing could fail on me during a ride and I would get back and realize that I had no audio for my video. The other aspect is there is a huge amount of cable hanging out back here on the bottom of this packaging. That could be a real nuisance while you're trying to tuck cables into a helmet. So this is what the sound test sounded like with the Audio Technica. Audio Technica sitting at a stoplight, visor up. I can't help but sit here and be paranoid that that switch is off, but I know it's on because I checked it right before I took off. The idea of hoping that battery still got juice in it every time you do a ride though. All right, this is 25 miles an hour on the Audio Technica with the wind visor up. Here's 35 miles an hour with the Audio Technica with the wind visor down. 50 miles an hour Audio Technica. 70 miles an hour Audio Technica. The other option that I wanted to explore, again, in thinking that, hey, not every microphone is made specifically for use in the helmet, but you know what microphone is made for it? Is the one that comes on your Cena. And in this case, I've got the 30K on this helmet. And I thought, look, we all know that the microphones on here are pretty good for filtering out wind noise. Why not try that? Now, I didn't buy a whole extra 30K, but I did buy an extra microphone, which again puts us in about the same price point as these others. And this particular one for the 30K has a two and a half millimeter pin that goes into the module. What that means is I did have to buy an adapter for it. This simply goes from a two and a half millimeter pin female to a three and a half millimeter pin male. That can then go into your GoPro adapter and into the camera. For the others, I'll be mounting them halfway up the cheek pad, but since this one is meant to be mounted up in the front by your mouth, I'll mount that one there because it's a nice clean way to do it. You don't have anything tickling the side of your face. And so that would be the fairest way for me to see how to evaluate this along the other microphone. And here's what the Senna sounded like. This is sitting at an idle at stoplight and the Senna with the wind visor up. the radar alert in case it came through. This is 30 with the center mic and the windscreen up. This is 30 with the center with the windscreen down. This is 50 center windscreen down. 55 accelerating. Seventy. in the Senna going back the other way against the wind. Now that we've tried all three microphones in the helmet, let's look at each one side by side and talk about the pros and cons of each, which one I chose and why. You'll notice I'm not even going to include the Zennheiser lapel mic because it's just not fit for this application. Couldn't hear the voice in it. It's, it's not even worth discussing. The first one I'll talk about is the Audio Technica. The ability of this product to filter out the noise and just focus on a clean vocal sound was incredible. Where the product fell short to me was the usability. Couple things. First of all, the fact that it's got an on off switch and a battery, that just spells disaster for any time you're trying to do a vlog. You're going to be out riding and either you're going to forget to turn it on, 
your battery's gonna go dead while you're riding, or you're gonna leave it on afterwards and drain the battery. And I'm sure that's part of why it achieves the quality of sound it does, but usability wise, that's just gonna mean wasted time in video that you can't use. The other aspect is, look at how much cord is included in this. So not only is it a ton of cord, but then you've got this bulky device here, and it just, I mean, that's a mess. And we're talking about installing these in a helmet, so it's not like we have a ton of space, and I really don't wanna to try to pack all those feet of cord into that helmet. The second product, the Purple Panda. This is one that's basically made for motorcycles, and once I got past the whole connector thing, which actually wasn't their fault necessarily anyway, the cord is much shorter than what the Audio-Technica is, so it's gonna be a whole lot easier to install. This is still what I consider a really good product. It had a decent balance of capturing the vocals while filtering out the irritating wind noise, but it still picked up on the engine noise, the road noise, whatever you wanna say, that makes it feel immersive, like you're in the helmet with the rider. Overall, this was a really good product. I could hear my voice. Yes, I could hear the motorcycle sounds in the background. You have to speak up and have the microphone close to your mouth. When you go back and watch your movies, you wanna make sure that you can hear that voice above the sound of the engine and the motorcycle noises. Now, the other aspect of this that just drove me nuts was this rabbit's foot. I didn't hear a huge difference between just the foam and the rabbit's foot. The rabbit's foot you kind of forget about when you're riding, but boy, starting off and coming to a stop when you're thinking about it more, that's just annoyed me to no end, have that tickle in my face inside the helmet. But I don't think you really need it. You could just use the foam one and probably be okay. The last one though, the Senna, seems like a no-brainer to me. It's made by people that focus on sound inside of a motorcycle helmet. And we already know any of us that have Senna's already have talked to people over the phone from our helmet. And we know that we've gotten feedback saying, hey, it sounds great. I can tell it's a little bit something different, but not terrible. And you can see from the video that this did a great job. It picked up the vocals, but it really deadened out the motorcycle noise. And it gave a good, clean sound to your voice. Yes, you need this little adapter, but that's actually fine because when you look at the overall product, it's still right about the length that you need. By the time you plug it into the helmet, route it around the side, and then put it into the adapter for the GoPro, you don't have several feet of cable or like this mess trying to tuck it in a cheek pad or something. This is, makes the most sense in terms of a high quality sound for your voice, deadening out the noise around it, and ease of use in mounting it. So this is the one that I'm going to choose and show you how to mount next, because it, it's, to me it's the no brainer. It's the cleanest voice sound and it's the easiest install. Depending on what you're actually recording, you may prefer the Purple Panda, and I'll give you an example. Let's say that you go out and you mount a new exhaust system to your bike. You may wanna really capture that sound of the exhaust in a comparison video between the before and after while being able to record your voice. In those kind of cases where you're really trying to capture noise of the bike or noise of the helmet or whatever it may be, you may prefer that Purple Panda. Some people like it better because it captures them and brings them into the immersive system of your helmet because it feels more real with that noise. But you have to think about the purpose of the video. If the purpose of the video is to be able to convey your thoughts on, you know, for riding gear or parts that you installed or whatever it may be or the, the road situation or your travel vlog or whatever it might be, if the goal is for people to clearly understand your voice, then the Senna or the Audio-Technica, if you can get past the usability, is really the best choice. It's gonna be the cleanest sound. Purple Panda may be great for very motorcycle specific folks because they're gonna be more understanding that you have noise in your helmet because they've been through it. 
However, if you have a mixed audience where you may have part of that film is me inside the helmet talking as I'm going for a ride somewhere, that mixed audience isn't going to be near as tolerant of noise in that helmet as a specific motorcycle group. So just give a little bit of thought to what is your goal with the video and use that to guide your choice. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.